The things that men are capable of never ceases to amaze me. Derogatory. Hannah almost had a slam dunk to look good because Nick was very incompetent and not a very good partner. But because she was so mean to him, she looked worse. If I were to describe Ramses, I would say progressive when it's convenient. They were so good at communicating that the production was like, boring. We're not gonna show it. Tyler told Ashley the whole truth. I guess I believe him as much as I can believe a man that I don't know. Hey guys, it's Briar of Briar Chats and this is a safe space for yappers. Now, I'm assuming we've all done our required reading for this video, aka torturing ourselves by watching Love is Blind season seven. Because yes, it is true. It seems like every season Love is Blind is just trying to get wussa and wussa, less and less coherent. And yes, season seven to me was a complete and utter disaster from beginning to end. And we simply have to yap about it. So if you, like me, watch Love is Blind season seven and you just need to yell about it. Like I personally just need to yell about how bad this season was chat about the reunion and just our general opinions on the show stick around because we're gonna get into it now obviously all my opinion yada 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 what do i know nothing clearly okay cool let's get into it so i'm not gonna do a recap of the whole season i will have timestamps below but the general overview in my head of how we're gonna yap through this season is I will do a quick TLDR on each of the couples. We will yap about the reunion and how that kind of proves us case in point why the season was terrible. Tray terrible. Um, and then we will get into the bigger picture of it all. Chat about why it's so bad. Chat about why it's just fallen off the rails. And in that discussion, I specifically want to use other country's versions of Love is Blind to kind of prove how much worse the US version has gotten over the season. So let's get into the couples, shall we? I feel like in past seasons, I have been like, we need more pod time. We need more pod time. Not like this, okay? A big theme throughout this video is gonna be me talking about how the producers are unable to create a narrative and how it's kind of like a fight between the cast and production to control the narrative. But I feel like the reason that we had so much pod time was because that is where the producers had the most control over the narrative. But this unfortunately only exacerbated the issues that we have with the creating of the narrative, with the pacing of the show, because we spent so much time on people that don't even make it out of the pods. We spent so much time in the pods, and yet when we had the six couples that went on the honeymoons, like you felt like you barely even knew them. And I don't know why the producers of the show have such a hard time constructing a love story and like letting us know important things about each of the cast but the pods we were in there for the first five ish episodes and it felt like we really knew not a whole lot about each of the couples so let's get into the couples shall we let's start with a love is blind first which is we met a couple that said yes to each other but the production team actually decided to not continue with their love story and that is Brittany and leo now here's what i will say about Brittany. I think people like her because she is actually honest about why she's on Love is Blind. And that is not for love. That is for likes. That is for clicks and engagement. And I think the reason that she kind of came off scot-free of it all was because she was pretty honest about who she is and what she wanted out of the show and what she wanted out of a partner, which is a rich man. And so shock horror, she fell in love with a rich man into stage right, Leo. Now, yes, a very sad story. Leo's whole family passed away and left him the kind of family business of art dealing. So he is a rich man. He's kind of like Bruce Wayne, but nowhere near as cool and doesn't have an alter ego that I know about. But he is very rich and he couldn't help but mention it to everyone all the time. And so when Brittany 
heard, oh, rich art dealer with a Rolex. She was like, hmm, I do think it's love. Uh, so this is love. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it was not love. When they met IRL, there was absolutely no sparks flying. No one, we did not drop everything now. We did not meet in the pouring rain because no sparks flew and production kind of saw that and was like sorry babes you don't get to go to Mexico or wherever they went was it Cabo Mexico Mexico I feel like it was Mexico for their honeymoon and I feel like this is a really interesting choice they say it's because they were the weakest couple however I find that hard to believe considering some of the contestants we've had in the past a la, what was his name? Shake? Where he said, mm, love might not be blind, but it is blurry. And I just feel like it's kind of strange that the production is pretending like we are setting a gold standard for following only slay icon couples that want to fall in love. But for one reason or another, Leo and Brittany did not pass go. They did not collect $200. They did not get to continue on in the experiment and shock horror they did not continue their relationship. So we are now left with the six couples that did make it. So let's start with the couple that broke up first, Stephen and Monica. Now, the minute you meet Stephen, you're like, like you want to like him, but you know something's going to go wrong. And that could either be because I'm very perceptive or because production wants us to know that something's going to go wrong and I feel like it's probably the latter because even though I like to believe I'm a perceptive genius like if the shoe fits it's probably production and because Stephen he says all the right things he is enamored by Monica he is a yapper it's true he has his PhD in yapathons because he won't shut up and Monica is educated smart independent girl boss in a positive way and they make it to just after the honeymoon where this is the first example of production absolutely having zero control of the narrative and so much nonsense happening off screen because the story we get that's kind of chaotically pieced together is that Stephen had to go to a sleep study and at that sleep study he was sexting a girl on Instagram about sexual fetishes. Yeah, it was very confusing. Everyone was like, sleep study? Why are they, what? Okay. And Monica, in the most iconic way possible, is like, you need to Venmo me back all the money that I've spent on you because he lost his job because he went on Love is Blind. So they were like, oh, babes, we didn't keep your job. That was crazy because up until that point, it felt like, Monica was trying to convince she herself she liked Stephen, so it never felt like they were gonna work. And it felt like Stephen was just like horny and really enamored with her. Like he would say anything and he just stared at her with like big puppy eyes, like, oh my gosh, you're amazing. And it's like, yeah, she is. But you could tell she didn't really like him, so you didn't feel like it was going to work out anyway, but I did not. No, I didn't see that coming. Like, it was so out of left field. The things that men are capable of never ceases to amaze me. Derogatory. Next couple, Alex and Tim. They did a classic lovers blind trauma bond. In the pods, because it is such a heightened and accelerated process I feel like a lot of the time you watch couples trauma bond and trauma dump on each other so they become really connected very quickly but not in a very healthy way and the minute that they got out of the pods it was like they just didn't really like each other Tim at the first sign of conflict wants to peace out and run and Alex again like Monica it felt like she just didn't like him now both of them were very much Ohana family Vin Diesel family oriented this is Fast and Furious they're both all about family and I feel like that was the connecting but also undoing of them because they basically unraveled because Tim's parents drove 10 hours to see them and then after hanging out for the whole day Alex went and had a nap 
instead of continuing to hang out with them and he just felt like that was super disrespectful like they just were not even on the same story it was really bizarre to watch them they argued really poorly and in fact on their honeymoon it was revealed that Alex actually put her hand over Tim's mouth when they were arguing and don't worry we will come back to that in the reunion but it was just like they absolutely brought the worst out in one another and it was not slay like it was it was so bad and don't worry we will see and chat more about it when we get to the reunion chat. I know what you're thinking wow thank goodness we didn't follow Brittany and Leo because we got some really stunning couples instead. Don't worry, it gets worse. Because then we have Hannah and Nick, who I believe broke up next. They ended things right before the wedding dress and tuxedo fitting after the Great Gatsby party. Now, if I were to describe Hannah and Nick, I would just say like Nick is baby man child and Hannah is mean girl derogatory like I don't mean that in like icon legend mean girl Regina George I mean that in like I'm shivering in my timbers like she makes me anxious to watch it, and this was like the major discourse online is that she was so mean to Nick and it made everybody so mad not because everyone liked Nick but, be but because everyone didn't like Nick like Hannah almost had a slam dunk to look good because Nick was very incompetent and not a very good partner and didn't really know how to act like a mature adult in a mature adult relationship but because she was so mean to him she was always at least on camera bringing him down she looked worse and I feel like she listened a lot to the discourse about like maybe what Hannah is saying is not wrong but the way that she says it is so awful and so unproductive that it made her look worse basically and they basically end because they don't like each other as well like to me it's very clear that they weren't really into each other they didn't like each other like I don't think I remember seeing them have a healthy hangout once like it always seemed like they were fighting but then in their confession cams like their one-on-one -on -one chats to the camera like Hannah would be like but of course I love Nick like I love him so much but it's like do you though I don't know Nick's mum though she is so lovely like that's the one thing I will say his mum and even her family like they both seemed so nice and it was just it was just a hard watch like I didn't have fun I really it made me anxious to watch them like a lot of these couples just make you feel a bit unwell watching them because it's so unhealthy which leads me right into Marissa and Ramses now <laughs> Marissa was very excited that Ramses was a cancer and watching that knowing that she was an Aries I was like like she was excited she was like this is good and I was like this is not good and I was proven correct and look I know a lot of cancer men my dog is a cancer man and he is a problem no look I just felt like I don't know if the cancer thing is the problem but if I were to describe Ramses, I would say projecting progressive. Like, progressive when it's convenient. Progressive when it makes him look good. But long story short, he ends it with her right before the weddings. And the reason he ends it with her is because he realizes that even though she's been 100% authentically herself this whole time he actually doesn't like her at all like he actually bleh, bleh, yuck he doesn't like it Ooh, disgusting like ooh, you were in the military even though you told me about that right from the beginning I hate that you're so loud you're so outgoing you're a lot yuck uh she was herself the whole time but for some reason it took Ramses what the six weeks that they're together to realize that he actually hated that and he ended it there were a lot of horrible things and I feel like the military conversation is really complex and as someone not from America I can't speak on it the best but here's what I will say Ramses is very valid in his feelings of not liking the military I I'm really sorry I cannot remember what country he came from I'm just gonna google it one sec ah oh yes oh yes okay Ramses is from Venezuela so that is incredibly 
a complex and he would like not be into the military. But the thing is, is that he knew all along that Marissa was in the military. So I just think that he probably should have known himself enough because he was very clear that he didn't like the military and being from Venezuela, valid and fair. That was something that he knew about Marissa the whole time. But over time, he just made her feel worse and worse about it. He was also like, a lot of these people are like super like hypersexual. And it's just like a lot. Like Marissa was like feeling sick on her period and had been driving back and forth to Baltimore. And he's like, I'm just really upset that you wouldn't have sex with me right now. Like, boo, tomato, tomato, next couple, shall we? So as you may have calculated, I have told you about five couples. Two of them made it to the altar. Let's talk about Ashley and Tyler, shall we? Another great example of the cast trying to control the narrative and creating a very confusing story because they could have been so good. They could have been, is it Cam and Lauren? You know, one of those couples that was solid, that everyone loved, and they could have laughed all the way to becoming influencers from this. But alas, Tyler chose to not tell Ashley that he helped his friend who was in a same-sex relationship have children. I'm guessing the old-fashioned way, if you know what I mean. Um, so he biologically has fathered three children, but not four him to be a father to but for that couple to have children do you catch my drift are we on the same cool but instead of telling her in the pods he tells her afterwards off camera and so they then have this really bizarre on camera discussion about it it's not good it makes everyone hate tyler and everyone be like run ashley run she doesn't. They say yes at the altar. And so we're going into the reunion like, oh, are they still together? We'll find out in a couple minutes. Lastly, Taylor and Garrett. How do I describe it? They both are very smarty, smarty pants. They both have science tattoos. They are, to me, proof that this show doesn't know how to tell a good love story because they barely get any airtime the only airtime that I personally remember is when they had a fight because Garrett's ex messaged him and he replied this show for being all about love is blind and making love stories is terrible at telling a good love story because Taylor and Garrett especially Taylor worship Taylor all hail Taylor she's stunning She's smart we love her she's an icon they were so good at communicating that it was just like the production was like, boring, we're not going to show it. And it really, to me at least, does a disservice to the good couples on this show as well. Because it's like you truly do only get airtime if you're a Hannah and Nick situation, if you're a hot mess. Like if you're a good couple, they don't know what to do with it. So you barely get to see it and you barely get invested. Like all I know about Garrett is he's like obsessed with his job and fishing. Anyway, they also say yes at the altar. So we're coming into the reunion. Two couples made it to the altar out of the seven that we met and they both said yes. Spoiler alert, they are both still together. Now, let's chat about the reunion. And I'm going to say this with my full chest, wholeheartedly, look at me in the eye, look at me, look at me, look at me. I do not care about past seasons contestants. AD, I have nothing against you, but why are you on this stage? Like, I don't care about people having babies. I'm sorry, not right here and right now. If we cared about these contestants, we'd follow them on Instagram. Do you know what I'm saying? But this show insists on, like, bringing back old contestants. Like, AD, she was like, yeah, I'm in a relationship, but I don't want to tell you about it. And, like, she was just giggling the whole time. It made me so angry. I have nothing against AD, but this actually makes me not like her. Because I'm like, why are you in this reunion? It's not about you. Okay, cool. So let's get into the couple updates. What do you think? He doesn't want to talk about it. It's because I said that stuff about cancer men. It's not my fault that you guys are problems. Anyway, so first of all, Taylor, oh my gosh, she is a Michelin star chef because boy, did she cook Garrett 
into a man. Like she made him look so much better. Like fashion, yes, hair. Oh my gosh, he went from like an all over one hair length haircut to like growing it out with like, it was like a Prince Charming, like, oh my gosh, she cooked. She knows how to season. I'm so impressed. So let's start with Garrett and Taylor, shall we? They are still together. Garrett took the boys on a fishing trip. The boys are very bromance. Love you boys, besties, cutesy. One of their big storylines was about where they were going to live because Taylor really wanted to live in San Diego and they tried to, but now they're going to live in DC again. Look, I don't know. Some people had a problem with it. I think it's kind of fair if Garrett was struggling for him to be able to tell her that. I think you are allowed to change your mind about where you want to live. I think that it's okay that he wasn't doing okay. I just hope that Taylor will also be happy in DC. Do you know what I'm saying though? Like it's not that I have a problem with where they live. I just worry that maybe wherever they live it's gonna feel like a compromise to one or the other my dog is so close to the tripod but we had so many questions about Garrett and Taylor but because they are a success story the show couldn't care less and it's so annoying with them out of the way I guess the way I would describe this reunion is like (laughs) I probably can't say it on YouTube a blank swinging competition like it was like a one-upping situation. Everyone was trying to point out how everyone else was wrong because they were getting criticized. Like it's, it was so toxic and aggravating and I like felt sick watching it. Like, no, my life is definitely worse than when I started watching this show. So let's get into it, shall we? Let's start with Ashley and Tyler. Again, A further example of how out of control production is with the narrative. What happened with the kid situation is that, this is what they're saying anyway, Tyler and Ashley had the conversation off camera. And then they were like, well, we obviously have to say something about it on camera. But they tried to control the story and not talk about how... Basically, the couple that he helped, they had a breakup and so then he stepped in and the lines got really blurry and it got really messy. So he was a part of their lives for a bit. They just tried to control the narrative. And so in doing so, production was kind of splicing things together, making it look so cuckoo bananas. And it didn't make any sense. They're basically saying Tyler told Ashley the whole truth. I guess I believe him as much as I can believe a man that I don't know. You know, like, how much are you ever going to believe something like that? If Ashley believes him, that's her choice. I'm not going to hold it against her. Again, though, it's just gotten so fourth wall meta that they are trying to control the story and production's trying to control the story. So us as an audience gets an incredibly incoherent narrative. And they went from being like the most beloved couple to like a hated couple where everyone thinks Tyler is a liar and a gaslighter and Ashley is being manipulated. Cool, cool. Next couple, shall we? So an interesting thing they did on this reunion is they had some of the family members on like a special couch and one of those family members was Marissa's mother. If I were to describe Marissa's mother in a way, I would say I'm terrified of her in a complimentary way. She scares me so much, but she's only ever speaking truth and facts. And that's on period. And so when we get to Ramses and Marissa, Ramses is basically playing wounded animal. Like he's just like, I'm, you know, like, I'm so sorry. Like I just have like, you know, I'm taking accountability. Like, okay, cool. And Marissa is very emotional. I feel like unfortunately for Marissa, like in that point, if she had just said her piece about the Ramses thing and that she was very upset and then kept quiet on stage, people would still like her. However, as we get through the reunion, she can't help but say things that make her look bad. Um, But that's not what we're talking about right now. I feel like they never ask the questions that we really want to know. Basically, the cast use this time to kind of address the social media response to the show, which I understand why, but it just really, it doesn't, 
like answer people's questions but basically the long and short of it was Marissa was still very upset about the situation Rams has talked about how he didn't really realize how upset she was like watching it back was obviously very emotional Marissa's mum was like I had to pick up the pieces you POS and valid and fair Marissa still was very emotional about it as an Aries I can confirm valid and fair I think it was right though that they didn't end up together they weren't gonna work I just think that Marissa really wanted to be married and on some levels they really got along so she chose to kind of like <sighs> I'm just not gonna look at the parts where he was really awful to me and made me feel really bad about being in the military so yeah we didn't really get much out of that situation it was just kind of like a f reaction to the breakup is what we got oh yeah but one funny thing was is that Ramses was like I wasn't being a whiny brat about not wanting to use a condom to have safe sex and I'm sitting there like okay sure but you were question mark like he was whining about when she wouldn't have sex with him and then he was whining about how he didn't like condom sex okay cool cool anyway let's move on from here it gets so much worse. <laughs> I just feel like everyone was kind of portrayed exactly how they are. So let's get into Hannah and Nick, shall we? Hannah basically came on with the agenda to prove that Nick didn't like her. I guess point out that maybe she was mean to him, but also he was mean to her like this is what I mean by a blank swinging competition she had very clearly listened to the social media response because she was just like parroting like it's not like what I said was true it's just how I said it and it's like okay we get it you watch TikTok it was awful to watch Hannah was so mean and like a dog with a bone towards Nick and once again I don't like Nick I don't want to have to stand up for Nick. I personally feel like Nick does a pretty good job at making himself look bad and making himself look like he's talking out of his blank hole. But Hannah can't just let that be proven by him. She was so obsessed with proving that he came on to Love is Blind for fame and wanting to get stardom out of him, that he didn't like her and that he talked badly about her to other people. And it was just once again like she was like I spent the last year like trying to improve myself like no you spent the last year having an external glow up without reflecting on any of your internal behaviors because she was just as awful as she was on the show in the reunion she was so mean it was giving me high school fight or flight it made me so anxious like it was like bullying and this is where Marissa came in and just looked bad because obviously is friends with Hannah and so wanted to stand up for her but in doing so it just made them look like mean girls it just made them look like they couldn't let it go they couldn't let it be so obvious that no one liked Nick like no one liked Nick I have not seen a single person be like I like Nick except for Katie which let's bring in stage right Katie Katie is from the pod squad and at the Gatsby night she was saying that Nick was cute and they had a chat because they had also been in the pods and Hannah was like had an argument with Nick about it and was like to Nick well maybe I trust you but I don't trust Katie it's now revealed that they are like besties and so Katie is like I'm so shocked that you said that about me and Hannah was like I was just saying anything to say anything like I just wanted the argument to end so I just said that and I knew that if I said I didn't trust him he would flip out and this is when Marissa's mom is the realist because she literally says to Katie, she's like, she made you feel like shit for that for a year. And what? And it's true. Like, I can tell that Marissa's mom does not like Hannah. She thinks that she's a bad influence on Marissa. She thinks that she's making Marissa stand up for someone that she shouldn't and valid and fair. Mm -hmm. All together now, valid and fair. Yep. We didn't get much of a muchness out of the Hannah and Nick situation. Hannah did a very non-apology to him for her behavior. In another interview as well, it was so scary. They were like, oh, if there's anything you could say to Nick, what would you say? And Hannah literally said, why did you let me talk to you like that? 
the goops and gags I felt seeing that like 101 how to not be accountable for your own behavior actually it's Nick's fault for letting her talk to him like that like it was crazy so yeah basically Hannah proved no growth no change having an external glow up doesn't mean you've become a better person okay I said it let's move on to the even worse part of this whole reunion which was Alex and Tim. Oh my gosh, this made me feel so sick. So like I said earlier, Alex had put her hand over Tim's mouth when they had an argument on their honeymoon. So it turns out that she did that because she did not want production to hear that they were arguing. This is how far the cast is going to try and control the narrative. Like you have to question if you are being put in a position to physically put your hands on someone, whether or not it was aggressive, to control a narrative and to make you or someone else not look bad and to try and be in control of how you're being portrayed. Like, that is when I would truly and seriously... Oh, Saxon. As predicted, my dog did in fact hit my tripod. Okay, you have to think that if you are being put in a position to physically put your hands on someone else whether or not it's aggressive to control a narrative, like that is too far. You should never be in such a position. You should never be that concerned with how you're going to be portrayed. And I feel like this is such a scary example of this fight between production and cast over who gets to control the narrative. I'm guessing that Alex has never done something like that. I'm hoping she's never done anything like that before and will never do it again. The fact that she did it because she was so concerned with how that that was going to be portrayed if they got found out by production and therefore filmed is really scary now it was so strange to watch them both because they as the other person was talking the other person would like it, you thought their head was gonna fly off they were shaking their heads so hard they were like like it was so bad they both demand respect and demand respect for their families and they're like you disrespected my family yet they don't show each other an ounce of respect they're not nice to one another they don't even see the situation it's like they had different relationships because they perceive the situation so differently and they both really I mean especially Alex like she really came with the intention to just try and make it look like Tim was not a good guy and I do think some people kind of gloss over his flightiness and how quickly he would leave but I also think that Alex did call him names and put her hands on him and wasn't nice to him so I don't think that what she was offering was a healthy relationship to stay in that's on both of them to be honest but they were so bad like literally Vanessa had to stop them arguing because they were only interested in getting their opinion out getting their side out trying to make the other person look bad and it just made themselves look bad like Tim tried in the beginning to be like I I respect you like I don't want I don't hold any ill will but by the end of it oh it was so bad I think to break up all of this toxicness we also bring out Brittany and Leo at some point and they basically just explain that they were not invited to continue the experiment because they were the weakest couple and they were like yeah fair enough and yeah fair enough not much to say about them really I feel like Leo actually reacted the best out of everyone in this reunion because he really just took the criticism on the chin. He really just apologized to the people that he was bad to. Whether or not you believe him is another thing. But he really didn't try and make excuses for his behavior. He just said sorry and he, you know, other people kind of stood up for him. And it was kind of like, yeah, he kind of looked better than I think what a lot of other people's games plans were. Which was to point fingers at everyone else and make them look worse than they do. Now let's finish with Monica and Steven. Steven I feel like like I said PhD in yapping he will say anything and he is very good at saying sorry. 
I don't know how good he is at meaning it. They clarify the situation a bit around the sleep study, basically saying that he had to do this to prove he has sleep apnea. When he was at the study, he got a message from this chick. They start talking about sexual fetishes. That's not how you say it. And... Monica found out, obviously, Dinzo Dunzo. I feel like throughout their whole relationship and who Steven is as a person is he will just say anything. He will not do anything. He is the perfect example of no impulse control. This man has not a single ounce of it. And they talk about how he had admitted in the past to emotional cheating. And I think it's just kind of proof that he doesn't have impulse control. He literally can't help himself and I'm not making excuses I just think that that's kind of fundamentally who he is he's kind of just like oh this thing's right in front of me I guess I'll do it I don't know how he's actually going to change that behavior I don't really see how he can and fair enough for Monica not liking him you know like I don't think she hates him in the same way that Alex and Tim hate each other especially how Alex hates Tim but she very clearly wanted to end things on good terms and I guess understand this dog. I hope Saxon is proving to you my case in point about cancer men. Anyway, I feel like Monica wanted to clear the air and not have any bad blood with Stephen. But unfortunately for her, Stephen <laughs> is at the core the fundamental issue. Like he is the problem and I think no she didn't really like him and it was like when you were watching it she was trying to convince herself to like him and maybe it was because on some level she could feel these bad vibes about him i mean they were never gonna work it's fine steven definitely didn't come off looking the worst steven is just kind of Steven. All in all, I don't feel like the reunion added much to the conversation. It maybe clarified a couple of details, but overall, I do not think it was a productive conversation. I do not think it helped with the narrative. I think if anything, it just proved this fight that the cast has to try and control how they are portrayed. And it ends up looking so much worse, which is really a great segue for me, me personally, into why this season was such a disaster. And the main point of it to me is this fight for control and this fight between production and cast to control the narrative and it's kind of like this self-fulfilling prophecy this cast is going on a reality tv show where they know that they could be edited in any which way so they try to control it and because they are trying to control it production has less to work with and therefore has to splice things even more chaotically than maybe they would have if everything was just caught on camera. What this led to was we didn't have a clear storyline. It was really hard to follow any of these couples. It was really hard to make sense of any of their stories. It was really hard to understand why these relationships broke down because for example with Ramses and Marissa his realization of needing to end the relationship was off camera Monica discovering the text from Stephen off camera Ashley hearing about Tyler being having biological children off camera Nick and Hannah I mean Hannah was just trying to make specific things happen on camera whilst Nick was doing all the shady talking about Hannah off camera so none of it really led to a sensical or logical story it was really hard to follow and it was really hard to get invested the basically their solution to everything was obviously production being like you need to look like a youtuber about to be giving an apology get on your sweatpants and look sad and it was just really incoherent it's a real disaster and and it's almost just like you're watching like out t parents that can't control their teenagers it's like the production everyone talks about how seriously they take these things yet they have no control over what is happening and what is being captured and what isn't which also kind of leads into just a general bad pacing and storytelling throughout 
this show. Like I said, we spent five episodes in the pods and with a couple that didn't even make it past the pods. Because only two couples make it to the wedding day, we have so much repeated footage of like flashbacks of their relationship to lead up to and build up to the wedding as to whether or not they would say yes. Where I feel like in past seasons, a lot more people go to the wedding and say no. Now people, I mean, And I don't know how to feel about this because it's like, it's pretty horrific to be dumped in front of your whole family at the altar in a wedding dress. That did used to be like a pivotal point of the show. And now it's like, if the characters get to that point, they're most likely going to say yes. I feel like it would be even better if we at least saw unseen footage as flashbacks or we had some sort of new footage to see as opposed to being shown things that we saw two episodes ago and probably watched at most a couple of days ago. I feel like the show people often binge and even though they drop episodes in clusters, it's still, it's not like we forgot. You know, people didn't forget what happened two episodes ago between Garrett and Taylor when they went to an arty science museum. Like, we don't need to see it again. I also feel like if you're not on social media following this show, you get a completely different story. Especially this season with the Ashley and Tyler situation and the biological kid situation. Like, I didn't dive too deep into that rabbit hole, to be honest, but if you're not on social media, you would have had no idea that that was a whole other storyline. And it's like, there's so much going on. Like people are trying to control the narrative so much. Like it is bizarre to me that all of these contestants are able to go off and do all of these interviews to talk about and share their side of the story before the show's even finished airing. And to me, it just completely ruins the show. And it's very clear, again, that these contestants are just trying to control the narrative, are trying to get ahead of what they fear to be a bad edit, and are trying to make themselves look like the good guy and establish a social media career. And it's just further proof that the show is not about the love is blind experiment, but about giving people a platform to become influencers. I feel like the other thing as well with this show is like the good couples happen in spite of the show and everyone always acts like natural reactions from contestants or the, their families are so absurd. People having reservations or going on a holiday with a stranger, like yeah, It is a kind of crazy and jarring situation to be put in, but it's like if you're not over the moon happy on a holiday, you look ungrateful. The parents and families that don't support them outright are seen to be the problem and like an obstacle that a couple has to overcome to get married within like two months. It's just so strange that if (laughs) if your friend came up to you and was like, I've been seeing this guy for six weeks, we're getting married, like you would not love us blindly support that (laughs) why is it that in this context of a show where there's no professional help there's no therapist there's no nothing to try and foster healthy relationships are we supposed to be supportive of these people getting married in an obscenely quick time now I feel like my last major point to me that proves that this season and love is blind America specifically is such a hot mess is because I also at the same time as watching Love is Blind season seven watch Love is Blind UK and Love is Blind Sweden and I feel like watching them all at the same time or you know one after the other really just only highlighted how out of control and how bad the American version of this show is because in the Swedish and UK version the contestants whilst yes maybe were acting one way in front of the camera had a consistent storyline you understood why a a relationship was or was not going to work and the reunions even if emotional were very honest people were just honest about how they felt honest about why the relationship did or did not work and I think 
in general made those contestants seem way more authentic than the ones on season seven did. I especially really enjoyed the Swedish version. I did watch it dubbed because I'm really bad at reading subtitles, but even watching it dubbed, it made way more sense than watching Love is Blind season seven. In the Swedish version, this is not too much of a spoiler, but there was a rumor going around about one of the guy contestants potentially being a father or you know someone is pregnant with his baby and even though one of the contestants found out about th this in a group chat offline it was still well communicated into the storyline she brought up the group chat how she found out she pulled the guy aside on camera so that they could have a conversation and all of these conversations more or less were happening on camera so that we could see the progression of that story of if he was or was not going to have a child but i feel like the other proof that love is blind america and especially season seven was such a disaster is that the couples that came out of the uk and the swedish ones were really good and were pretty successful. I feel like in the Swedish one, there were three couples that are still together and that happened in 2023 as well. So I think they've been together maybe a bit longer than this season seven. And I think the UK one, there was only one or two couples, but they were really solid couples and they really made sense. And the people that were very obviously clout chasers on those seasons just really stuck out like a sore thumb. Like there was this guy on the UK one called Sam and everyone, he just actually became like a social reject because it was very clear he was just trying to say salacious things to get airtime and people just really didn't give him the time of day people just really reacted negatively towards him and I don't really think he made any friends on the show because it was very clear he just wanted to get a platform from it and I feel like after watching the UK and Swedish versions it made me more annoyed <laughs> at this at season seven because I was like this show can work and it's like yes at the end of the sleigh this is trash tv there are early seasons of the American version that shows it can work as well as these other countries doing it way better and at least being able to put together a cohesive storyline to follow couples and to get you invested in them that it's like I really don't know how the American version is going to be able to pull it back because every single season that we've gotten has just gotten worse has just gotten more out of control has just had less of this stuff happen on camera and have the contestants try to manipulate the story more and they announced that there was going to be a season eight that will be released on valentine's day next year and i have negative amount of faith that that season is going to be any better at all if anything i think it's going to be very much the same as season seven you can hold me to it now if i'm wrong i'm sure we'll yap about season eight when it comes out because I guess I like to watch things that make me feel uncomfortable, sick, and cringe. But yes, I feel like I have definitely yappy yappy yapped for way too long about this disastrous season of Love is Blind. And I really want to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Did you watch this season? Have you watched other countries? I know that there are other versions as well from different countries. Like, are those ones better than the American one I would love to know I personally also really liked watching the Swedish one because I feel like you get a real insight into like relationship cultures from other countries which to me was really interesting like I found out that when you get engaged in Sweden the guy also gets a ring so that's fun I felt like when I was watching the Swedish and UK one yes I was watching reality TV but it was enjoyable you saw some cute couples flourish the storylines made sense and at least if the people didn't work out there was a level of respect for one another and it wasn't like a one-up blank swinging competition at the reunion but anyway, please let me know what you think about the show in the comments down below. Are you also just at the end of your absolute tether with the American version of Love is Blind? I just, I want it to be good. It could be good in theory. 
I think they do some things well, like doing it in one area of America, going and having the kind of real life simulation with work. Like there are things that they do that make sense. But unfortunately, this like chaotic fight for control of the narrative and production's inability to capture the important parts of people's stories and also their disregard for good couples and inability to show a good couple on the show. Like all of that together in a pot on Netflix with Nick and Vanessa Lachey as the host. It's a mess. It's a disaster. It's, I hate it here. So I will go to Secret Gardens in my mind. So yes, please let me know in the comments down below what you thought, thoughts and opinions down below on Love is Blind season seven. But yes, thank you guys so much for watching. If you stay till the end, you are a real one. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you want to keep up with me between my uploads, I'm on TikTok and Instagram, and I will link my vlog channel down below. And YouTube should be recommending another one of my videos somewhere on the screen right now. But don't worry, guys, because I'm not funny there either. Bye.